Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. In this episode, we're going to get ready for a frosty adventure as we journey through the wilds of the Yukon in the thrilling show, Challenge of the Yukon. Meet the courageous Sergeant Preston and his lead dog, King. Together, they patrol the frigid landscapes, upholding law and order in the unforgiving wilderness. Sergeant Preston, a stalwart Mountie, embodies justice and determination, navigating the challenges of the Yukon gold rush with unwavering resolve. At his side, the magnificent King, a noble, intelligent Alaskan Malamute, stands as a symbol of loyalty and bravery. Tales of perilous rescue, daring escapes, and the relentless pursuit of justice unfold in each riveting episode of Challenge of the Yukon. The radio waves come alive with the sound of sled dogs and the crunch of snow as Sergeant Preston and King face the harsh realities of the frozen frontier. Join us as we salute the indomitable spirit of Sergeant Preston and his lead dog King in the ongoing Challenge of the Yukon radio show. Together, they forge a legacy that echoes through the icy landscapes of the Yukon, where adventure knows no bounds. Now, let's get into this episode. This episode comes from February 25th, 1951, and the title is Vanished Loot. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. The Challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. One morning in late winter, Sergeant Preston halted his team before the cabin of an elderly miner named Hannibal Jenkins. Looking! A boy and girl were playing together a short distance away. Holly, well, how's my best girl today? Hi, Frankie. King. Look at him wag his tail. As usual, he doesn't want to be overlooked. He wanted to say hello to us. Oh, gosh, he sure is a wonderful dog. I wish you could leave him here with us, Sergeant. Well, I'm afraid I'd have a hard time getting along without him, Frankie. I hope you're going to stay for lunch. Well, thanks, Holly, but I just stopped off to see how you folks are getting along. Is your grandfather home? Oh, yes, sir. He's inside the cabin. There he is now. Well, howdy, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Hannibal. I wondered what was going on when I heard all the commotion out here. Oh. Hey, well, come on inside and take a load off your feet. May King stay outside and play with us? Of course, Frankie. He'll be glad to have a romp with you. Oh, gee, <laughs> <laughs> uh, those two youngins sure think a heap of that dog of yours. King likes youngsters. They seem to like him. Yeah. Well, sit down, Sergeant, and I'll get you some coffee. I've got some already brewed up on the stool. Thanks. Yes, uh, here you go. Oh, thanks, Hannibal. Uh, where are you headed, Sergeant? On my way back to Dawson's from 40 Mile. But I'd stop and see how you were making out. Well, things haven't been too prosperous lately, but I reckon I can't complain. Frank and Holly seem to be doing nicely. Oh, yes, they're lively enough. Of course, they do get a mite lonesome for them off. She's down in Vancouver in the hospital. Yes, I know. How's she getting along? Oh, well enough, I reckon. I had a letter from her the other day. The doc told her she'd be well enough to leave the hospital in another month or so. How long have the two children been living here with you? Well, they and the ma came up here and I on to two years ago, right after their pa died. Then last fall, well, she was taken sick. That's when she had to get down to the hospital. The kids wanted to go along with her, but... There wasn't nobody down there to take care of him. Besides, I couldn't afford it. Hannibal, I... I don't want to seem inquisitive, but I hear your claims petered out. Yes, it's true, Sergeant. But I haven't given up hope yet, and I'm going to run another drift. Maybe I can strike the vein again. If there's anything I can do to help... Oh, out no, on... no, thanks. It's just the same, Sergeant. We'll make out. Matter of fact, I've been 
able to make a little money lately by trapping. Oh, glad to hear it. Yeah. But if there's anything I can do later I'll on... I'll sure let you know. Well, in the meantime, how about another cup of coffee? That same day, a lean, hawk-faced man, dressed in trail clothes, walked into the Gold Nugget Cafe in Dawson City, pushed back the hood of his parka. He stood for a moment near the doorway, looking over the crowd of customers. And then his eyes fell on a burly man with a black mustache who was seated at a corner table. Howdy, Frisco. Uh, Lear. By thunder, you finally got here. Pull up a chair. All right. I was wondering how soon you were going to show up. Like I told you, I had to wait for a few weeks. If I'd quit my job at the bank right after the robbery occurred, they might have gotten suspicious. Yeah, I reckon you're right at that. What did you do with the money? Don't worry, I got it hidden in a safe place. Well, let's go there. I'm anxious to get my hands on my share of that hundred grand. Relax, it's safe enough. Besides, the place I've got it hidden isn't just around the corner, you know. We lead our teams to get there. Where is this place? A couple of miles north of town. A couple of miles? Sure. You don't think I'd feel safe with that stuff sitting around my hotel room, do you? A whole carpet bag full of brand new bills. Yes, but why hide it so far from town? I hid it there on my way into Dawson. I wanted some place that was nice and deserted. I figured there'd be too many cabins scattered around when I got closer to town. Well, so long as it's safe, that's all I care about. Come on, let's go. Got your team? Out in front of the cafe. All right. Let's mush. When Sergeant Preston arrived back at headquarters, he reported to Inspector Conrad. Oh, sit down, Sergeant Preston. Thank you, sir. I have an urgent message from the American authorities in Alaska. Message was delivered across the border to 40 Mile by a special dispatch driver from Nome. They must have arrived there after I left 40 Mile. Yes, the message was just relayed here over the telegraph about an hour ago. What's it all about, sir? Two months ago, the bank of Nome was robbed by a hold-up man named Frisco Farnham. He got away with $100,000 in new currency. Has movements been traced? No, they had no idea where he'd headed. But several weeks later, a clerk at the bank named Emmett Lee quit his job and left town. They now suspect that he may have helped plan the holdup. I see. They're sure that Lear was heading for the Yukon Territory. And if he is guilty, no doubt he's planning to join Farnham and collect his share of the loot. So they want us to be on the lookout for both of them. What are their descriptions, sir? Well, Lear, the bank clerk, is about five feet ten, lean, sharp-featured, and in his middle thirties. Farnham is older and bigger, heavy-set, black mustache. Uh-huh. There are a lot of men who might fit those descriptions, but... Perhaps we can pick them up. I've already notified the city patrol, and I'll send out word to all the police posts in the territory. In the meantime, here's something I want you to attend to, Sergeant. Yes, sir. The serial numbers of the stolen money are consecutive. I have them written down on this piece of paper. They're all brand new American $20 bills. I see. I want you to go to the banks and important business houses here in Dawson and warn them to be on the lookout for this money. The minute any of those bills turn up, Tell them to notify us immediately. Right, sir. Come along, King. After leaving the Gold Nugget Cafe, Frisco Farnham and Emmett Lear headed northward out of town. For some time, they kept to the main trail. And then at a signal from Frisco, they left the trail and turned eastward into a range of heavily wooded hills. Finally, Frisco called a halt near the face of a steep hillside. Oh! oh, yeah. oh. oh. What are we stopping here for? See the mouth of that cave leading into the hillside there? It's partly covered over with brush. Yeah? Is that where you hid the money? That's right, inside the cave. Right. Thunder, you sure picked a wild spot. <laughs> sure. I told you it was well hidden. Better take a lantern. It's kind of dark inside the cave. All right. Got it. I'll wait till I clear away some of this brush here. Okay, come on. Right behind you. I'll light the lantern. All right. There. Now what? It's right over there, hidden behind that pile of rocks. Hey. Holy mackerel, Al. Well, where is it? It's he? gone. Gone. I thunder, Farnham, if you're trying to Who's cheat Who's trying you? to cheat you? You can see for yourself it's not here. Sure, I can see that for myself. How do I know it ever was here? How do I know you're not trying to keep all the dough for yourself? Oh, help me, Lear. I hid that carpet bag right here. And all the bank money was stuffed inside it. That's what you say. For Pete's sake, why do you suppose I hung around Dawson waiting for you? 
If I'd wanted to double-cross you, I could have been down to Skagway grabbing a boat for outside by this time. Maybe so. If the bag's not here, where is it? How do I know? Let's look around the cave a bit. For several minutes, the two cooks searched around inside the cave, but found no trace of the missing carpet bag. Oh, God, look at those paw tracks there. Some kind of an animal's been in here. The critter must have dragged the bag away. Those paw tracks aren't the only tracks in here. What do you mean? Take a look at these footprints. Huh? We never made these. They're smaller than our prints. Holy smoke, you're right. Well, now what are we supposed to do? We've got to find the guy who made those prints and get the bag back from him. Sure, just like that, huh? It'd be easy to find who swiped it. You got your crystal ball with you? Meanwhile, Hannibal Jenkins was preparing to make a trip into Dawson. Uh, looky here, you young'uns. I have to make a trip into town today. You suppose you can keep out of mischief till I get back? Of course we can, Grandpa. Are you going to leave right away? Well, I'll be leaving before long, but first I... Uh, I want to go out and take a look at my traps. But you checked over your trap line this morning. Well, what, what if I did? There's a dead ratted wolverine been raiding my traps lately. I'm uh, hoping I can catch him in the act and settle his hash for good. Now, you two behave yourselves, and I'll be back in 10, 15 minutes. All right, Grandpa. Bye, Grandpa. Goodbye. Golly, I don't understand it. Don't understand what, Frankie? The way Grandpa's been acting lately. If you ask me, he's up to something. What do you mean? Well, haven't you noticed? The last three times Grandpa's gone into town, he's done the same thing. Said he had to go out and look at his traps just before he left. And I think it's just an excuse. Hmm. That's true. He has been acting sort of funny. Listen, let's wait till he goes to town and then go out and follow his footprints in the snow. Maybe we can find out where he went. Golly, I don't know. Do you think we ought to? Why not? If he's telling the truth, it won't make any difference. Well, all right. But I certainly hope we aren't doing anything wrong. The two children waited until Hannibal returned from his mysterious trip and started off with his team in the direction of town. Then they put on their parkas and went outdoors and began following his footprints in the snow. The prince led into the woods to a spot where a small log structure with a door in one side of it stood on four stilts with a short ladder leading up to the door. Oh, golly, look. His footprints lead right up into that old abandoned cache. Cache? Is that what you call that thing? Oh, sure. Some Indians used it for storing food when they camped here in the old days. Well, I'm going to see what's inside. You better be careful. Frankie climbed up the ladder, opened the door, and poked his head and shoulders inside the cache. A moment later, he emerged holding an old carpet bag in one hand. As he climbed down again, Holly greeted him in surprise. Golly, what was that old carpet bag doing up there? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. I'm going to open it. Jiminy, look. It's full of money. After finding that the carpet bag containing the stolen bank money had disappeared from the cave where Frisco Farnham had hidden it, the two crooks returned to town. They went to the Gold Nugget Cafe and sat there for most of the afternoon, wrangling uselessly about what should be done to recover the vanished loot. You sure pulled a smart trick leaving the money in that cave. Well, what else should I have done with it? I couldn't leave it sitting around the hotel day after day. Oh, yeah. No, the help might have gotten nosy and found out what was in the bag when they came around to make up the room. If you used your head, you could have found a really safe place to hide the I'll bag. Quit your griping. What we've got to do now is find out what happened to it. As the two men lapsed into gloomy silence, they saw an elderly sourdough get up from a nearby table, walk over to the bar to pay his bill. Uh, how much do you for that cup of coffee, Sam? Two bits, Hannibal. Uh, let's see here. I reckon this is the smallest I've got. Hey, a $20 bill. Huh? You must be doing all right for yourself. I thought that claim of yours had petered up. Well, that's right, it has. But uh, I've, uh, I've been making some money lately by trapping. You're trapping, huh? Uh, well, here's your change. Uh, thank you. I reckon I'd better be getting back to those two young'uns of mine. So long, Sam. So long. Hey, Lear. What do you want? What that old coot spoke about trapping gave me an idea. Yeah? I hope it's better than your idea of hiding the money in the cave. I'll pipe down and listen. What sort of a person would be most apt to go poking into that cave? How should I know? It wouldn't be an ordinary traveler, because it's too far off the main trail. Oh, so what? What I'm getting at is this. It might have been a trapper who was trailing some kind of an animal. Especially since we saw those paw tracks in there. 
The critter holed up in the cave. The trapper went in after him and found the bag by accident. Maybe so, but how does that help us? Well, you remember before we turned off the trail to go to the cave? The little old general store? What about it? If we went back there, I'll bet the storekeeper could tell us who does any trapping out in that neck of the woods. Doesn't sound too hopeful, but maybe it's worth a try. So since we got nothing to lose. All right. Come on, let's go. Meanwhile, after making the rounds of the banks and several business houses, Sergeant Preston stopped in at the office of the Yukon Express Company. The clerk at the counter greeted him. Oh, good afternoon, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Bob. Is this an official call? Yes, it is. We're trying to trace some money stolen from the Bank of Nome. Oh, over in Alaska, huh? I suppose you want us to watch out for the serial numbers. That's right. The money's all in brand new American $20 bills. $20 bills? Hey, wait a minute. I took in some brand new 20s just about an hour ago. Oh? Do you have them handy? Oh, sure. Right here in the cash drawer. Yes, they check. This is part of the stolen money. Well, I'll be hanged. Do you know the person who turned these in? Oh, sure. It was old Hannibal Jenkins. Hannibal Jenkins? That's right. He came in, bought a $100 money order to send to his daughter down in Vancouver. I don't suppose he told you where he got these bills? Well, matter of fact, I asked him, Sergeant. He said he just got paid off for some furs he trapped. Do you know if he's still in town? He may be. He mentioned he was going to stop off at the Gold Nugget Cafe for a cup of coffee. Thanks, Bob. Come along, King. <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Arriving at the Gold Nugget Cafe, the sergeant looked around the room but couldn't see Hannibal among the customers. He went up to the bartender. Well, howdy, Sarge. What can I do for you? Hannibal Jenkins been in here? Hannibal? Sure, he was in here a while back. I spoke to him myself. How long ago? Oh, I don't know. Half hour... Three quarters of an hour ago, maybe. Did he say where he was going when he left here? Yeah, he said he was heading back home to his two youngins. Thanks, Sam. There's nothing wrong, I hope. I hope not. Come on, King. Oh, oh, oh. After leaving the cafe, the two crooks had headed northward out of town. Whoa! When they arrived at Joe Parker's general store, they saw Hannibal Jenkins just leaving with an armload of supplies. As Hannibal loaded the supplies on his sled, Emmett Lear nudged his companion. Hey, that's the same old gent we saw back at the cafe. Yeah, yeah, so I see. Come on, we'll go inside and check with the storekeeper. Well, how do, gents? What can I do for you? I wonder if you can give me and my partner here a little information. Well, yeah, I sure will if I can. What is it you want to know? Well, uh, was there much trapping done around this neck of the woods? Trapping? <laughs> no, not a great deal. Too close to town, I reckon. Some of the Indians bring in a few skins now and then. And old Hannibal Jenkins... Hannibal? <laughs> yeah, some name, eh? Oh. He's the fellow just left here a minute ago. You probably saw him outside. Yeah, we did. Well, he started running a trap line a couple of months ago. And he's the only regular trapper around here, huh? <laughs> That's right. Don't reckon he catches much, although he says he caught some good pelts. And maybe it's true. He must be getting money from somewhere. Uh, what do you mean? He was in here just about a week ago, flashing some brand new $20 bills. What's that? Where does this guy live? He's got a cabin on Jabez Creek. Little Creek runs through the woods about a half mile from here. Say, how come... Thanks for the information, mister. We'll find him, all right? Come on, Lear. Step in again, Jim. Sure, sure. Hey, did you hear what the storekeeper said about those brand new $20 bills? Yeah, Jenkins is a guy we're looking for, all right. We could have figured that out back at the cafe if we'd used our heads. How so? That was a brand new 20 he paid his bill with. Don't you remember? I right, thunder, you're right. Come on, he hasn't gone very far down the trail. We ought to be able to catch up with him. Let's go. Marsh! 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 Husky! Barnum and Lear lashed their teams forward at top speed, and it wasn't long before they overtook Hannibal. Frisco shouted at the old sourdough. Hey, you, mister! Wait a minute! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Well, yes, oh, well. Uh, what do you want with me, mister? We, uh, we want to know where you got hold of all those brand new $20 bills you've been spending lately. $20 bills? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. You know what he's talking about, all right. Now, come on, speak up. 
only money I've had lately is what I've been paid for the furs that I've trapped. Don't give us that. If you know what's good for you, you'll talk and talk fast. Oh, no, you, you've got me all wrong, Mr. Allen. So you're going to be stubborn, eh? Don't make a move or I'll plug you. Hey, what's the idea of pulling that six shooting? You'll find out quick enough. Search him, Lear, and see if he's packing a gun. Right. No, wait, wait. Yeah. He's clean. All right, Mr. Hannibal Jenkins, get back to that sled of yours and start mushing. We'll tell you where to go. And don't try any funny stuff or you'll get a bullet in the back. What do you figure on doing with him, Frisco? We'll take him to that cave and work him over till he spills the truth. All right, let's go. March, you hussies! When Sergeant Preston left the Gold Nugget Cafe, he returned to headquarters and reported what he had learned to Inspector Conrad. Then he hitched up his team and drove out to Hannibal Jenkins' cabin. Hello, Frankie. Come on in. You too, King. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Holly. Your grandfather here? Why, no. Grandpa went to town this afternoon. Yes, I know, but hasn't he come back yet? No. And I can't imagine what's keeping him. He's never stayed away this late before. I see. Why? Is anything wrong? No, I'm sure he's all right. He's probably been delayed for some reason. Well, I think he was intending to bring home some supplies. So maybe he stopped off at Joe Parker's general store. Oh, that's right. I'd forgotten. <laughs> Sometimes he and Mr. Parker get to talking and they forget all about the time. I know what you mean. Won't you sit down and wait? He'll probably be home soon. Tell you what, Holly. I'll drop over to the general store myself and see if he's there. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sir. Goodbye. A short time later, Sergeant Preston arrived at the general store. Looking. Oh, 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 oh. soul if it isn't Sergeant Preston. Hello, Joe. You seen Hannibal Jenkins this afternoon? Hannibal Jenkins? Why, sure. He stopped in a while back on his way home from town. You'd probably find him at his cabin. No, I just came from there. He's not home yet. Well, that's funny. Should have been home long ago. Unless he went off somewhere with them two fellas. What two fellas? Two gents that came into the store right after he left. They wanted to know who did any trapping in these parts. When I told them about Hannibal, they went rushing after him. Wouldn't be surprised by what they caught up with him on the trail. Any idea what their business was? <laughs> Search me. I couldn't figure it out. Thing that seemed to set them off was when I told them about Hannibal flashing some new $20 bills around here last week. As soon as they heard that, they seemed to get all head up and excited. What'd they look like? But one was a big, husky feller with a black mustache, and the other one was, uh, well, what you might call sort of hatchet-faced. His partner called him... Lair, Lear, something like that. Thanks, Joe. You've helped a lot. Say, them two fellas wouldn't be crooks, would they? They certainly would. I wanted for robbing the bank of Nome. Come on, King. <laughs> Meanwhile, the two crooks had taken their prisoner to the cave where Frisco Farnham had hidden the stolen bank money. Hannibal sat huddled on the floor of the cave with his hands tied behind him. His face was bruised and battered, and his forehead was beaded with perspiration as he faced his two menacing captors. Well, are you going to tell us what you did with that money? Or would you like us to work you over a little more? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll tell you what I did with it. Just don't hit me anymore. Then speak up. I've, I've got it stowed away in an old abandoned cache out in the woods. Where is this cache? It's located between here and my cabin. About a half mile from here, I reckon. All right, get up on your feet. Uh, we'll go there right now and find out if you're lying. After leaving the store, Sergeant Preston returned to Hannibal's cabin. Hi, Sergeant Preston. Did you find Grandpa? No, I didn't, Frankie. Golly, you don't suppose anything's happened to him, do you? I hope not, but... Well, perhaps I'd better tell you the truth, Holly. I'm afraid your grandfather may be in trouble. In trouble? Do you have something he's worn recently? A shirt or a sweater? I think so. But what are you going to do? I found out your grandfather's start at Joe Parker's store. With a piece of his clothing as a scent guide, King may be able to pick up his trail near the store. Gosh, Holly, maybe we ought to tell the sergeant what we found this afternoon. That's just what I was thinking. What do you mean? Well, Grandpa's been acting awful mysterious lately. And just before he went to Dawson today, he went out somewhere out in the woods. So after he left, we followed his footprints and... It was a short time later that the two crooks and their prisoner arrived at the cache in the woods. Hannibal's wrists were still tied, 
but Emmett Lear stood guard over him to make sure he didn't get away while Frisco Farnham investigated the cash. It's here, all right. I tell you, he's telling the truth. Too bad you didn't talk sooner, Jenkins. You might have saved yourself that beating up you got. Well, how about it, Frisco? Is the money still inside the bag? I reckon so. It feels heavy enough. Wait till I open it up. Yeah, see you in a second. <laughs> sure. Chucked full of bills. Just feast your eyes. Good enough. Now, uh, what do we do with this gent? Oh, well, afraid we'll have to get rid of him. Get rid of me? Sure. You don't think we'd be dumb enough to let you go spilling the beans about us, do you? As the old saying goes, dead men tell no tales. But you, you can't kill me. I've got two young'uns to look after. Shut up. We're going to kill him. Let's go ahead and get it over with. Yeah, this is a nice, lonesome spot. I'll put a bullet through him right now. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? I thought I heard some kind of a noise. Oh, relax. I tell you, I heard a noise. Came from right over there. Up those guns! I'm out I'll get him. Oh, you don't... Oh! My arm! As the sergeant fired, Hannibal had butted Lear with his head, and both men toppled off balance. Hey, you goop! Thinking fast, the crook pulled Hannibal in front of him. There! But before he could fire at Preston, King closed in with a snarl. Let him stand where you are. Pick their guns over this way, Hannibal. Help! Get this dog away from me! All right, King, that's enough, boy. On your feet, Lear, and get over there next to your partner. Oh, for Pete's sake, do something about my arm. I think it's broken. I'll oh. attend to it in a few minutes. You're both under arrest in the name of the Crown. All right, Frank, Holly, it's safe now. Oh, Holly, Grandpa, are you all right? Well, yeah, I reckon I am, thanks to Sergeant Preston and King. But how did you folks get here? We were coming here with Sergeant Preston to show him the cash. But King warned us something was going on, and... Oh, golly, we were so scared. Well, to tell the truth, so is I. But it's all over now, thank heavens. Hey, Frankie, how about getting these ropes off my wrist? Oh, sure, Grandpa. A short time later, after Emmett Lear had been handcuffed and Frisco's arm had been bandaged, Hannibal told his story. I found the bag in a cave a couple of weeks ago, Sergeant. Seems as how this fellow Frisco had hidden it there for some reason or another, and... I knew it must be stolen money on account of the bank wrappers, but, well... But you didn't turn it into the police. Oh, Dad, let it. No, I didn't. Well, I'm not trying to make excuses for myself, but, well, I needed money awful bad to buy supplies and pay Elsie's hospital bills. So I figured I'd borrow some of this here money and pay it back later on when I got back on my feet. In, in the meantime, I was... Keeping the bag here in the cash. I see. I suppose you'll have to arrest me, too. No, Hannibal, I think you've learned your lesson. Huh? And judging from those bruises on your face, you've already paid for your mistake. Besides, your grandchildren need you here to look after them. Oh, doggone it, Sergeant. That, that sure is nice of you. I'll pay back every cent of the money I took. Pay it back to Frank and Holly. What do you mean? The Bank of Nome offered a $10,000 reward for the recovery of the stolen money. And since Frank and Holly supplied the information that led me here, they're entitled to that reward. $10,000? Oh, golly! Well, I'll be doggone. The money you took will be deducted from the reward, so you'll have to settle with Frank and Holly. As far as King and I are concerned, this case is closed. <laughs> In our next adventure, two tough-looking men sit talking in the cafe at Selkirk in low voices. That fella, Jim Lackey, will be an easy mark for our scheme, Van. He's broke and asking everybody for a job. Yeah, I notice he has a good dog team we could use for our getaway. Yeah. We'll frame it so they'll think he pulled a robbery. But when they find him tied and gagged while we hide him, we'll be far away from here. Come on, let's go find Lackey now. If the two crooks follow through with their plan, it may be that the Mounties will be misled into trying to find Jim Lackey for the crime the crooks commit. If Sergeant Preston and King try to trail the crooks and approve Jim's innocence, they may face death when they reach the thieves' hideout. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure next Saturday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Saturday and Sunday.
This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until next Saturday. This program came from Detroit. Today's most popular heroes of outdoor adventure are heard every weekday afternoon from 5 to 6 o'clock. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Mark Trail roams the wilderness, Clyde Beatty defies the beast of the jungle, and Victor Borga entertains with five minutes of musical laughs. Tuesday and Thursday, there are the Indian hero Straight Arrow riding to uphold justice, Sky King zooming to supersonic action, and Bobby Benson, the cowboy kid, in tales of western daring. Listen to Mutual's Hour for Fun with Mark Trail, Clyde Beatty, Victor Borga, Straight Arrow, Sky King, and Bobby Benson over most of these stations every weekday afternoon. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.